Hello, hello everybody. It is Jackie from Pocket of Preschool and guess what theme we are talking all about tonight. We are doing a sports theme and this one I'm actually going to, we're going to sit at the table for a little bit and I'm going to show you some activities and then I'm going to walk you around my classroom and I'm going to show you how I have the block center set up, pretend set up, the sensory table and science set up for a sports theme. Oh, and the writing center too. So let's jump right in. So Tell me in your comments, you, the, like if you do a sports theme, if you don't do a sports theme, and what your favorite um, activity is for a sports theme. Or maybe you only do sports when it's like um, the Olympics, like summer or winter Olympics. So tell me all the things. And then also, if you're wondering, these are from the Dollar Tree during like Easter time, um, but they're so fun. So really quick, all the links are in the top. There is a link to a really fun freebie so make sure you sign up for that um at the top it's just like a little link you put in your email and then the freebie will be sent the freebie oh, sorry blah, the freebie will be sent directly to your email there's also links to um the my teachers pay teachers store and there's links to the blog and all the things so we're gonna jump right in so again this is a sports theme if you own my sports math and literacy centers this has a ton of activities in it. I, so I have a sports theme center pack. I also have summer Olympics or summer games and winter games or winter Olympics because the term Olympics is trademarked. So I call it summer games and winter games in um, my TPT store if you're, um, if you're looking for it. So let's start off with one of my favorite things, a Play-Doh tray. Love, 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 love Play-Doh trays. So for this Play-Doh tray, I found these like sports Picks, I think they're for like cupcakes. Um, Party City, I have two boys, so they do sports um, themes for their birthdays a lot. They have a ton of different sports little picks. And then the little cookie cutters, I either got these off Amazon, but they're like a sports set. So there's like a ball, a football, um, a helmet, and bat. So that's really fun. If you don't have those um, specific sport ones, just put in um, some circles and some ovals and they can make all the different sports balls, some different color Play-Doh. I did look out. I have some sports mini erasers. Um, and then I love these little eggs for Play-Doh trays. So they're just like the sports theme ones. Again, I just get them at Walmart or Dollar Tree around Easter time. And then I did sneak in these um, cheerleading um, letter mats. These are perfect to, to um, sneak in a Play-Doh tray. Um, for them to, you know, make letters and learn all about letters as they're building with their Play-Doh tray. So I'm gonna put that on the shelf. That way I can show you kind of where it is <laughs> when um, we walk around. So in my art center, I have a special spot just for Play-Doh trays and it's, I have a Play-Doh tray for um, everything. I'm not teaching this year, but when I did, I did every time. So another fun um, fine motor, or it'll be math a little bit, you can do is grab your circle puppets because they're like like a sports ball, right? If you have like the sports puppets, those are even better, but um, I don't have those. So what can we do with them? They can literally just fill them with pom-poms as a fun, fine motor activity. What else could we do with them? You know what I'm gonna say and you know what your students would do. What, are the, what, would, they, what, what would they do first? They would probably make patterns, right? A lot of students naturally make patterns in a lot of the different trays, and this would be perfect for that. These are the little pom-poms from Hobby Lobby. I wanna say they're like a half an inch. Um, now, if you want to, if you don't wanna do patterns, again, you could just fill it for a fun, fine motor activity. You could have them make patterns, or you could add a dice. So they roll the dice, one, I'm gonna put in one, and they roll it again, three or whatever it is, three. And I'm gonna put in three. One, two, three, one, two, three. I have three. One, two, three. And then they can fill it up and then dump it when they're done. If you want to make it addition or informal addition, they can roll two dice. Six and five is 11. So they would go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. Or if you want them to count on, my trick is to say five and they cover it up and then they count on. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So that's a little fun trick. 
Um, so yeah, and they each get one poppet, or you can do a tray of poppets and they can share, or this could be like a morning activity just to kind of get their fingers warmed up, whatever, whatever you want to do um, in the classroom. But yeah, just these circle poppets are perfect because they're just like a sports ball. So that's one fun activity you can do. Another one is, oh, let me get it. It's heavy. <laughs> so these are, oof, blew away. So these are the Play-Doh mats, and this is the freebie. I'm gonna take them off the tray for a minute. So this is the freebie. Okay, I didn't laminate these yet, um, but <laughs> there's all different sports. And again, the freebie link is at the top, so put your email in after we're you're done watching, and this will be sent right to your email. Now, you would laminate them, I haven't yet, <laughs> but you can also have your students write the word in a dry erase marker and they can erase it. But I have um, a, this is usually my bucket of Play-Doh. I use this bucket for like morning table time. It's kind of like my teacher table. So I would probably put this bucket out with these because they're all different colors and they roll the Play-Doh snakes or they can smack, like pinch off little pieces and smash it on to make all of the different sports things. And look, there's even bowling, hockey, there's weights, all kinds of fun stuff. So all the fun. And again, this is the freebie. So sign up at the link at the, where the links are. I love Play-Doh mats. They're such a fun, um, a fun little freebie. So another fun, fine motor activity you can do. And this one is in, oops, I spilled it. This one's in my sports math and literacy centers. So you're gonna need pom-poms for this one. My um, basket didn't have brown, black, and those colors. <laughs> so what they're gonna do is they are going to, my little tray here. So we have like baseball, glove, trophy, football, shoe, volleyball. That one's really fun. I'll put that one on top. So what they would do is they would pick one. And I didn't have time to laminate these, so my trick is to put them in like a page protector and it works just the same. And they can trace. That marker's dead. <laughs> it doesn't work. They can trace the word and then with their new eraser or a tissue, they can erase it. And then what they're gonna do is they are going to put the pom-poms on to make the volleyball or whatever object they have. This is great fine motor work. It's great hand-eye coordination, um, all kinds of fun things. So really, really fun fine motor. And again, lots of different sports in here. And then they put them back and then they would pick another one. So again, this activity is in my sports math and literacy centers pack. And it was updated, so make sure you go download it again. Um, if you don't have that one. Another fine motor activity that was added to it are these really fun cutting, well, fine motor, like little craftivities. So what they do is they pick one of the sports balls. So football, baseball, basketball. There's also um, a pom-pom. And then I cut up some tissue paper and I buy like the tissue paper from like the dollar store and I cut my own. That's why none of the pieces are even because um, I've just never had any good luck buying cut tissue paper. But if you do, let me know in the comments where you get yours because I just cut my own. That's why there's pieces that are little, <laughs> some are big, <laughs> they're all different sizes. So, and it's a lot um, cheaper to do it that way too. So I use tissue paper for these so you can still see the lines on the, on the balls or they can even like kind of um, squish it a little bit to make it flat to make the stitches or they don't have to up to you and I just put the tissue paper in a little a little cupcake tray just because it made it made it really fun and easy but they cut out the sports ball and then they glue the tissue paper on and that doesn't sound like it's that tricky but it takes it takes a minute to cover this up and they can kind of scrunch it if they want they don't have to scrunch it some of it's going like mine some of them scrunch a little bit some of them didn't but it's a really fun um, fine motor activity. It'll make a really fun bulletin board. So that's another fun um, fine motor activity or art you can do. But if you wanna do open-ended art, I have the activity for you. So I know we all do like spider 
painting, right? Got my little squeeze bottles. What I did is I just put a piece of paper in my box lid. I don't know where my one that I usually paint with is. I have one that's like covered. And then I got four different little balls. So I have this one, and then I have two um, bouncy balls. They're actually different weights. I could just feel them. And then I have a larger one, and then I have this like prickly one. So that way we're gonna put them in and we're gonna do it together. So what they do, I love these little squirt bottles because they can squirt the paint out and you don't have to deal with kind of, um, you know, scooby it in. But if you wanna do that, you can. So I'm just gonna kinda, there we go. Just squirt it in a little bit. And then what they're gonna do, oh, and these are from Discount School Supply, but I wanna say Dollar Tree has them too. So they're just gonna move, move it back and forth to make a gorgeous picture. And what they're gonna notice is the balls are gonna move differently. They're gonna make different textures. Some are gonna be big lines. Some are gonna be little lines. The porky, the like spiky little ball will definitely look different than the other ones. But as they're doing this, what do you notice? I'm using my shoulders, right? And we need, and I'm probably using my core to hold my body up while I'm moving the box. Cause they're, this box is gonna be big for them. So, and this is just like a copy of paper, paper copy paper box lid, um, they're, they're gonna be moving it a lot. So it's gonna take a lot more of their body, body moving than mine, cause I'm a little bit bigger than a preschooler. So they're just gonna be moving it and grooving it. And they're gonna be building those big muscles. They're gonna make those really strong with this fun open-ended art activity. And look how pretty you guys, you can kind of see where I squirted it, but then some kids are gonna really shake it on the table. They're gonna bounce out a little bit and that's okay. But again, we need strong, big muscles to have strong little muscles. But this is a really fun open-ended art activity. And if you can kind of see, they don't have a lot of paint on them yet. If you're worried about it making brown all the time, put out colors that mix well together. So like, if you don't like the red, so maybe you would put out um, blue, yellow, and green, because those will not make brown. So, or you could do another day, do like red, yellow, and orange or you could like put purple out with this guy, right? Cause we know how to mix colors. So put out the colors that um, make, don't make brown. Or you could put out the colors for your favorite sports team. I, you see I'm wearing my Cardinal shirt. So you could also put out whatever your sports team is playing when you're doing your theme. So I, for the Cardinals, I could put out um, red and black and we um, and white and they could make um, a Cardinals theme or whatever your city's theme in. But this would be really fun. And you could also put out different balls each day or different, um, different ones for them to pick from. Um, I typically use a spoon or they can just keep them in the box and then put this on the drying rack. It's again, totally up, up to you what you wanna do. But a really fun open in a dart activity. And if they love this, you can also um, get a really big box, like a, like a bigger box lid. Or you know like the Amazon boxes if you get like a really, really big one like cut it so there's a lip just like this and then bring that in and then you can do it as like a partner activity and they can shake it around and move it and then it's a partner activity still open in a dart and still a ton of fun so that is a fun one you can do so i have another fine motor for you this one's for golf so i love <laughs> golf tees um so what you, and if you um if you don't have golf tees Amazon or Target, Walmart, they all have them. So what you can do is I cut some pool noodles in half. Now, if you don't have pool noodles, it's okay. You can actually just make green grass and you can use Play-Doh and so again, either one works. And then what they're gonna do is they are going to, I have a little hammer, you can use a mallet or like a, a block and they're gonna hammer it in. Again, we're holding onto it like this. So again, great fine motor. Tap, 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 we're gonna tap it in. So you can, again, you can do it a bunch of different ways. They can just, the Play-Doh, they don't really need to tap. They can probably just really push that in. Okay, but if you, again, we can sneak in learning here because that's what we do, right? So you can have them do what? What's one thing we could do? They could, hide this one <laughs> so they can roll the dice four and they can get out four one two three four and then they can we're gonna pretend like I hammered all these in okay 
They're not, it's, you can tell it because I'm just like pushing it in. It's not super hard to do. And they don't have to put it in order. Like they can do it on the side. It's totally fine. Um, it just goes across the top. <laughs> it usually makes a line. But they can do it all over if they want to make it kind of like a porcupine too. Um, but you can tell before I rolled three and then I rolled four. They can use the same color. They don't have to. Totally up to you. Totally up to them. So again, they can just push it in for some fun fine motor with um, the hammer. These are um, like from my, my block center. Um, again, they can roll it, roll one dice, roll two dice for addition, or you can have them make patterns. And here's my little pattern. So blue, blue, oh my goodness, <laughs> green, pink, green, pink, green. So they can make patterns too. You pick what you think is gonna work for your kiddos, or maybe pick what um, skill they need to work on. If they need to work on counting, make it a counting activity. If they need to work on patterns, have them do patterns. If they need to just work on some fine motor, just put it out as an open-ended activity and they can go to town. So we got some golf. All right, so as you know, they have eggs. So there's so many things you can do with eggs. I have an entire blog post on all the things you can do with plastic eggs. So if you don't like this idea, hop over there to my blog and search plastic eggs. And there's ideas for like, every learning, not everyone, but a lot of the different learning domains. So what you can do is I love using my letter beads. You never really use them as letter beads though, do we? So what you can do is you can put one in, you can put a couple in, up to you. And then each egg would have some letters in them or one, up to you. But if you only have like this many, because maybe the set only came with this many, put a bunch in each one. And I love using little clipboards. And then what they do is they pop open the egg and then they write down and say the letters that they found. So I have a D and a D and an M and an R. And then they close, they take the letters and they put them back in their egg because they need to hide them for their friend and then do it again. Now, if you wanted to make this math and counting, you could put like mini erasers in here. Like I have these sports ones. You could put, this one won't open. That many inside and each one has a different amount. Then they can open them and then they have to get it out and count how many, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and they could write down seven. So again, use these eggs and you can, you can use them for letters, you can use them for counting. You could also put um, a sight word card in here, um, like literally just write it on a piece of paper, put it in there, and then put the letters to make that sight word in there. So they have to open it, read the letter, build the letter, and then they can write it. So rebuild, write, but way, way more hands-on than normal. So that's another fun one you can do. Just gonna keep scooping everything over. All right, so this one, you could do this for any sport. So we're gonna use these again, because I love, I love my little letters. Now, you could use these for any sport. Pick the sport that your kiddos love, that a lot of your kiddos are playing or whatever season it is. Um, Party City has a ton of different, ton of different sports plates um, or um, Walmart or Party City, or not Party City, Dollar Tree sometimes has them too. Depends on the season. Um, but if you see them, grab them. But what you can do is literally, and you can do this with names or sight words or letters. I, these are just the, the name cards I have in my classroom. I just stuck it on. Okay, so now what are they gonna do? I would stick all of them on, right? So all the different kids would have theirs on and they would pick a friend or a plate and they would make that name. We're just gonna pretend like this is the right letters. Oh, look, I did pick one right out. So they would pick the letter. You could even, if you wanted to, hold on. Because you know I'm extra all the time. You could even jump the letters out like it's the like playing field and then they could and it'll be easier to find them that way too and then they could pick out the letters to make the name and again you don't have to do names with this use 
do what your students need to work on. So if you're, if you're a kinder and your students are working on sight words, do sight words. If you're a preschool and they're working on their names, work on their names. If they're working on their name in uppercase letters, do their names in uppercase letters. If they're working on identifying uppercase letters. Um, all my let all my name cards in my classroom have uppercase on one side, lowercase on the other. So, so much fun. Again, you could use this for any sport. I just happen to have these because my kiddo had a soccer themed birthday party one year. So I have these too. Mm -hmm. So that's another fun activity you can do with plates. All right. So, okay. We did this one. I just have it out here twice. <laughs> Another fun thing you can do, let's talk about these baskets. I have four more activities and we're gonna walk around the room, I think. So I got these, these are like, um, what are they, like stress balls? Now, if you don't have little basketballs, it's fine. Just use like orange bean bags or bean bags, that works too. So what you can do, I thought I had the tape over here. I don't, okay, sorry. We're gonna go with it. We're gonna make it work, <laughs> right? So these letter cards are free on my blog. I love these. I use these all the time for so many things. Um, I'll drop the link here when I'm done. It's actually the sensory. These are the from the sensory writing. Um, free, how to make a, um, a sensory bag. That's what it is. So what you can do is you can put the letters on the baskets now or sight words or numbers, whatever. Again, whatever. Maybe you can, maybe you want to do shapes, do whatever you're working on. And what you can do is put, now I only have five baskets, so you would only have five letters. So pick the letters that your students are struggling with. And then, what would they do? They could say J and try and shoot it in J. Okay, these are bouncy. <laughs> so maybe use the bean bags. And then D, and they could shoot it in there. And then whatever letter it is, D, F, or maybe you're doing, again, you could do sight words. Whatever. You can do what your students are working on. Um, you can also do this with numbers and they can put like five. If this was five, we're going to pretend one, two, three, four, five, and they can put five in again. If you don't have these balls, it's fine. Use bean bags. No big deal. <laughs> They're very bouncy if you buy them. I just bought those off Amazon um, one year. So yeah. So a ton of different things you can do with these. So fun. All right, I'm gonna show you a couple of the games, the literacy games that are in my math and literacy centers before I walk around the classroom. So one game is this letter sort. So we have some hockey pucks. These are, that looks like a one, but it's not. So we have all the different letters and then we have a couple different ways we can sort them. We can sort them uppercase, lowercase, holes, no holes. That's the same one. <laughs> And then in my name, not in my name, the type of letter it is. And there's also, if they don't want to actually use the maps and they want to write it down, there's also printables they can do that on. I love doing letter sorts because it really helps students pay attention to the letters. And I love in my name, not in my name because it always gets them talking. This is in my name. This isn't in my name. They love their name. So let's use the things they love. And I also love sorting letters by types of letters because... Letters are so similar and they're very tricky. So this letter has a curve and a straight line, so it will go into both, but it really helps them really notice the different parts of the, of the lines that make up the letter. So, because again, letters are so similar. Our language is tricky, isn't it? All right, another activity we have, so we have in the center pack, it's a volleyball jump and build. So you're gonna use cubes. They can jump, but again, if you don't want them to, that's okay. So they would jump like volleyball does, and foot ball, and they would jump, foot ball, and then they would put two cubes on it, and they would build it on each one. And then we have binoculars, baseball, um, cone, me uh, megaphone, all the different things, and they would build <laughs> all the letters, basket, ball. And again, they can jump, or you don't help, tell them they don't have to. Um, because they can't read. So if, if you tell them to just um, clap and build, they won't know. <laughs> it's okay. Unless you have kinder, then they might be able to read that word jump. All right, my last literacy activity I'm gonna show you. This one's really fun for all my soccer friends. 
It is a read, write, build. So you can do this a couple ways. You can pick a letter and then they can write it. I don't know where my dry erase marker, here it is. They would write it and then they can build it with either Play-Doh or little pom-poms. They could build the letter in the little net. There we go, little B. Okay, or they can do uppercase or they can match the uppercase to the lowercase and then write it and then build it. You can also have them build it with Play-Doh or they can do sight words. I have them to beg you so they wouldn't all get mixed up. So we can read it and then they would write it and then they would build it with the lowercase soccer's, soccer balls. Super, super fun. All right, let's go to map. Ready? All right, this one is really fun. This one's with cones. So if you have these, I want to say like for Target dollar spot maybe. So if you have cones, I would grab probably like two sets of them. So you have 10. Because what you can do is make a giant number line with them. Now, if you are in kinder and you are practicing counting on, you don't have to start with one. Um, I have, again, this is the number set. Those are the freebie on my blog that I use for all the things. So maybe you want to start with two. Maybe you want to start with six. Or if you're in preschool, you're going to start with one, right? So what they're going to do is they would put these in order, right? So they're going to make a number line with the cones. Okay, you can, they, you can actually put out the tape and they can tape on the numbers. Again, it's great fine motor. And then they would put them in order. Okay, or if you don't want them to tape it on, totally fine. You have it already taped on there. And they do stack with the numbers on, it's fine. It's not gonna hurt the cards. I have these laminated. Um, and then they can put the numbers in order. So let's say you only have one set, not a big deal. So we're gonna pretend like this says, where is it? I either need what, five or, oh, there it is. So we're gonna pretend like we have 10 of these or however many, many, and we put them in order. Now, what you can also do is they can build that many underneath. So they're gonna build a finish line. So they would go one, two, three, four, five, five. And then they would build six, and then they would build seven, or they could put it this way, up to you what you wanna do. So a really fun, super simple number activity with cones. And usually they have them at the dollar store too. And if you can't find these, they have the construction cones too. All right. All right, I'm gonna show you some of the math activities that are in the, the center unit. So this is a basketball count. The numbers go up to 20. What I usually do is I lay these out in a row on the table and then they can count out that many. You can use, if you don't have the mini erasers, just use the little pom-poms so they can put that many in the basket. And then they can also sort, so I have num um, fingers, the number, the numeral to match, and then a 10 frame. So again, put out the baskets that match. A really fun counting game. And then we have bowling. So this game, you can play it two different ways. There's two different levels. So this, it's bowling and subtraction, but if your students are not ready for subtraction, that's okay. There's numeral cards and there's cards with um, the bowling pin. So they, if they don't know their numbers yet, that's okay. So they would put that many on and then they would put that many pins in one, two, three. And then you can put a pretend bowling ball on there if you want. I'm just gonna pretend like this is the bowling ball. I forgot it. And so I just folded these over, so fun. And then they get to knock it down or try and knock it down, right? <laughs> or scoot them over. And then if you want to make it subtraction, you can, it comes with a five mat and a 10 mat. And what they would do is they would pick and put out the cards to match. So if you're only doing the five mat, then only put out the cards that go up to five. So like you would do five, and so they would put five on one, two, three, four, five. 
and then they would they put out so they have five and then they get three they knock three down to one two three how many are left two and they can write it in the equation so again bowling is subtraction anyway so use all the things to make that learning act or that learning skill really fun this one I love because I love baseball. This one is just a 2D shape match. So they pick the card and they put it on. Now you can also, if you want them to practice drawing the shapes, they can pick the card and trace it. So that way they're sneaking in some fine motor too. So this is the baseball shape match. And then my final principal game I'm gonna show you is the football game. This one's so fun. So it comes with two sets of cards. So we have tally cards and we have the football goals. And what you're gonna need is a dry erase marker because they're gonna pick a card. So they can pick a tally card or a field goal. So they're gonna pick the card, two, and then they would write it, two. And you can have the mini erasers, but if you don't have those, that's okay. You can just put that many on and then they have to find it and then they have to circle it. So they're writing it, they're counting, they're counting, they're counting um, the objects on the card and they're count <laughs> counting out that many. And then they have to find the numeral and it also goes um, to 12 or it has a, um, what is it? A 20 frame or a double 10 frame mat on there too. So we can get some, some of those higher numbers in there. All right, I'm gonna take you off the stand and we're gonna walk around the room, okay? So this one is, so it's a balance beam pattern. So I just got these wood blocks from um, the block center and then they can make patterns with cubes on the balance beam. Now, if you don't have these, just um, cut out some brown pieces of um, paper and they can, or felt, and they can make patterns on those. And then we have a really fun tennis butcher paper activity. Again, you can do this on the table or on the floor. You can play it a couple of ways. Um, I have this like um, squishy tennis ball, but if you have a regular tennis ball, that works too. But they can throw it at one or roll it, see where it lands. That landed on eight. So they could use it as like a numbered identif. <laughs> they bounce it and then they would try and catch it. <laughs> it's hard to do one handed, but um, and they can identify the number that way. Or you can put that many on for manipulatives. And then I also have little numbers out here, like the um, magnet numbers, or, and they can match and put those on too. And you can do this for any sport. I just didn't have a tennis activity and I wanna do tennis, but you could also do this for basketball, baseball, really any, any sport. Okay, so here's the block center set up. So across the top, I have my STEM, I can build sports set. Now. This has summer sports, winter sports, has a ton of sports in it. Like so many, I put all the extra ones down here. I like to have, um, since I don't have these low enough for the students to like ha have it at their eye level, I have it on a ribbon so I can literally pull this down and give it to them so they can um, use this photo to build. And then I love this book, Building Stadiums. It's a great um, book and it's perfect for their level and it's perfect for blocks. And then for props, so typically only the top of my shelf changes for the theme and the bottom blocks always stay the same. Plus um, this shelf pretty much um, stays the same. And then so we have, and then I also have them on a ring here too. So that's more at their um, eye level. We have some felt so they can pretend it's grass, the stadium, ice rink, whatever. We have some pom-poms, sports caps. These are some little medals. I found those at the Dollar Tree. These are found trophies at the Dollar Tree. Grass and water for pools or ice um, and green grass for the field. And then I found these little sports, little balls at either Target or the Dollar Tree. And then we have little me blocks so that way they can put themselves in the stadium. So that is so, so much fun. So they can build all the different sports things. Okay, so for the sensory table, we have, I colored some white beans with some acrylic paint, and then I put in little teeny tiny pom-poms 
for kind of like, you know, like the cheerleaders um, and like, or the confetti or whatever it is. And then I have again, my little sports eggs, some mini erasers. Um, I put these sports cups in here too. And then I have these little scoops and little tweezers. These are both from the Dollar Tree um, for some fun sensory fun. How much fun is that, you guys? Okay. All right. Let's walk over to the writing center. So I have the writing center all set up for our sports theme. Um, this is from Lakeshore, this double-sided easel. I have some letters, again, not all of them, just some of the ones that they would need to be working on. And then they can match the, the lowercase and the, um, they can match the initial sound or the beginning sound and the lowercase letter. I do have my letters in there at the bottom always, so they could even match that to the side. And then at the writing center, I have all of the um, vocabulary cards. I do have these fine motor tracers. I put a little pen in there as well with some fun sports-themed writing paper. And then I love putting dry erase boards in for a sports theme because I feel like coaches are always using dry erase boards um, for different plays and things. So put it in like a little book box and you can have some dry erase boards. I have an emergent reader there too. So they can use that for um, their sports theme. So let's talk some gross motor. So you can obviously set up obstacle courses, balance beams with the cones and all the different things, right? Um, one of my favorite things to do is do hockey. So I have my goal. I have my stick, which is half of a pool noodle and beach balls. We used to do this all the time for inside recess when I um, was teaching and then I would keep them in. These are just like the Dollar Tree used to have them. They're little like laundry bags and they keep all of our pool noodles in here. Just perfect for um, um, hockey sticks. And if you want to do soccer, lose the sticks. You could also do ice skating, have them put their feet on the plates this is these are my ice skating plates you guys so they're dirty <laughs> um they can slide around for dancing these okay you guys i made this these are my first year of teaching so they they probably need to be made again they're getting a little sad but the kids love them so they're just like little dancing bracelets so those are those clear bracelets and then i tied some ribbon this is that like um okay it's not even curly ribbon it used to be that like curly ribbon that um that you would have when like for a birthday party i just bought like big spools of it and i made some and you can make them rainbow again i made these my first year of teaching every kid gets two so they get one for each hand and they can dance around and you can do all the different movements have them go fast slow all the things and then i keep them so when they turn them into me, I um I just hold out my finger and they put it on there so that way they're not all tangled. And I keep them on a book ring and I literally hook it to my easel so that way they don't get tangled. And how perfect is that? And again, they look a little sad because they made them my first year, but you guys, they are so awesome. You should make some. All right, bowling alley for pretend play. This one is so much fun. So, so much fun. So, do you want to see it? Oh, I forgot to show you the books. Sorry. So, on my blog, I do have a whole book list of sports books. Like, literally a ton of them. There's tons and tons of them on there. Um, there's nonfiction as well as um, fiction. Because, again, you want to have that good balance. So, if you want a list of all of my favorite sports books. Um, and I bought, I, I had almost all of them. Or I rented them. Or I... um would rent them from the library to check them and make sure they were great before I put them on my book list, just so you guys know. All right, so back to Bowling Alley Dramatic Play. Okay, so we have all kinds of fun things happening here. So we have our bowling lanes. So that's just tape on the ground. These are just those cardboard stands from the Dollar Tree for like the science fair or something. And I just put tape on them. And then the mats, are just laminated and then they have to match the pin to the number now you can do it easy or hard on this so they can do numbers and you can have only six you can do it with nine you can do shapes there's also an option to do colors or color words and match them on the floor and again i just made the mat so that way it matches so we're getting some fun gross motor in and then we have the bunting banner and then 
You know me, I'm gonna sneak in all the math I can. So they have to write their name and then they can write their score. I put a number line at the bottom to help them. Now my three-year-olds are probably gonna be scribbling this, that's okay. My pre-K or K friends um, will be writing um, the numbers and counting so the score will probably match what they're actually bowling. But I don't expect that for my threes. And then this is my Melissa and Doug stand. I don't think they make this right now, but you can find one similar. I usually take off the awning, it's gone. Um, I have little bowling bags. Okay, you guys, use your, your kids or um, ask families to donate old lunch boxes because they're the perfect bowling bag. Um, yeah, and they got the little trophies are from the Dollar Tree. But we have our prices. And then I always have a, um, a number line with um, dots, with dice so they can count at the crash register. We have our snack menu. And we have our order form so that um, they can take it off. And then they can, the cashier <laughs> would write what they want to eat. And they can ask them. And so they'd have to read the pictures. Again, encouraging that conversation. Let me back it up here. Sorry. And then I always have like this receipt paper. So they will write. And then I have a little marker. So they would, after the person would pay, the customer pays, they write how much it is, and then they cut it off. Again, getting some scissor skills in, getting some number writing in, sneaking it in everywhere I can. So here is the other shelf. So we have the bowling balls. Oh, here, let me give you a kind of a slow, a slow-mo here. So that's kind of where we're at. So, oh, let's do this and finish the snack shop before I show you the bowling balls. So here's our snack shop. I kind of turn the kitchen into the snack shop all the time. Um, Inside I have plates, bowls, and cups. I typically like to use, um, you can either use what you have or if you want to make it match, just use paper plates or like, um, and you can reuse those. We have some fruit. I always have some books in there um, that are related to our dramatic play theme. For snacks, we have our drink machine, which is my very fancy um, box <laughs> that is it's looking a little rough, but it's okay. The kids love it. They put their drink in there and they can make the sounds. We have our popcorn machine. Again, another box. I just taped up, taped um, one side up. Our popcorn is just, they make it. So they help make a lot of the props. They um, cut it up. And then for, you could do that for like a table time or a fine motor activity. And then they can crumble it. And then now you have popcorn for your dramatic play. We have ice with the tweezers. Again, sneaking in all the fine motor I can. For cups, you can tell I got them donated from Target. Small, medium, and large. So they are working on sizes and using that math vocabulary. We have ice cream. My trick with sprinkles is glue a salt shaker shut. And then you have a sprinkle jar. Oh, I dropped my popcorn. And then pizza. This is like that felt Melissa and Doug set. I like it because it's also, they have to make a puzzle um, if they want to put it together. Um, popcorn, this is just a bag. And then they put the popcorn inside. The pretzels I made with Model Magic or like an air dry clay, I can't remember. But yeah, oh, you can tell the one is broken, that's okay. And then we have the arcade. So I have a little fishy game and then they made some marble mazes with um, Legos. And then for bowling shoes, I do, again, sneaking in all the math, they have to ask what size. So I said one, size two, size three and four. And they, um, the shoes, I only have the on the one size, so they would have to match. So it, they picked out this black one, they would have to get out the other black one. Those are just my extra shoes <laughs> that I donate. Um, when I'm not using them, obviously I take them back home. Or my base, it's in my, ba my preschool is in my basement, so I would take them back upstairs. The bowling balls, I did put numbers on them, again, so they can tell you what size that they want. Again, we're just sneaking in lots and lots of numbers. My shoe cleaner is an empty bottle, but... They can pretend they should clean the shoes and strengthen those fine motor muscles. So that is our Bowling Alley Dramatic Play. Tons and tons of math and literacy snuck into their play because learning through play is so, it's so amazing. It's my favorite. Okay. I think I forgot to show you guys the science center. So my, oh, and I think I finally lost my plant. <laughs> my sports, my sports shelf. My science shelf pretty much stays the same. All year long, I may switch out that a little bit. Um, 
like I may switch out the pipes and the puzzles, um, but it pretty much stays the same. Like I might switch out the shelves during the fall for something natural that's um, in the fall. I'll switch out those blocks, things like that. But this shelf pretty much stays the same. And then I have my like investigations table. Oh, I forgot to grab that book. I have, um, I usually have a nonfiction book right there. So I grabbed, so we're doing force in motion. You could also do simple machines and do ramps. Um, you could do that too. But I have some vocabulary cards and me or whoever is teaching, um, or maybe I'm um, another teacher in the room. I did put, um, for this science unit, I did put the definition on the bottom because these are tricky words. And if you're busy and you're getting observed, I want to make sure you have the knowledge to give to your students um, that's correct because it's okay that you don't have all of those memorized because we have to teach every science there is, right? Um, so we have rolls doesn't roll, so they have to pick a card. And then what they will do, all those things are in here, and they will try and see if it rolls or if it doesn't roll. If it rolls, they'll put it on the roll side. Then they would pick another one, a crayon. They would pick it out. Does it roll? Yes. And they would put it on the rolls. And then you can have these two if you wanted um, as a check, or you can have them actually have these on there so they could say rolls, and they would stick it on rolls. And then we have our discovery pages. Now, if you don't want to do rolls, doesn't roll, there are some more options. There's also a push and pull um, activity you can do. There's also directions. Things can move. So this would be like setting up a maze with the Legos. I love using these base plates for that. Um, and then they would have to try and make the ball move all the different ways. Okay, so a really fun and easy way to set up the Science Center. I hope you guys loved all the activities and ideas for a sports theme. Um, there's a ton of videos up on YouTube with all the different themes. So if you need a different theme, um, hop over there because I have a ton of videos over there for different themes. Um, but I hope you guys have a great day. And again, don't forget to go hit the link and put your email in and sign up for that freebie so that freebie will be sent to you and yeah if you have any questions please let me know but otherwise you guys have an amazing day or night depending on when you're watching this and i will talk to you guys soon bye